So today, um, I'll be talking about uh, how you can use DevOps to jump to the next curve from uh, where you are. Um, if you do not have DevOps already running uh, at your organization or at your workplace, uh, and if you are running conventional operations, um, in other words, if you are running routine operations, how you can jump to the next curve, and uh, how we did that at WSO2, and uh, I will be mainly sharing my experience and uh, how we did that, and uh, the technologies and tools we used, um, etc. So, uh, first I'll be talking about uh, the difference and challenges between running routine operations uh, and DevOps. And then uh, I'll be talking a little about uh, pipelining. Um, and then uh, how we implemented uh, CICD at WSO2. And uh, then about the managed cloud service um, and uh, uh, running uh, CICD with containers. So uh, how many of you run operations in your organizations? How many ops folks? How many sysadmins we have in the room? All right. So you know how to differentiate a sysadmin or an operations person uh, from the rest of the crowd, right? They are the ones in jeans, usually, and with the loosely tightened shoelaces. Um, so uh, running routine operations, what does that mean? When it comes to routine operations, that means you have a bunch of tools, and uh, you have a group of people working with these tools, setting up these tools, operating these tools, and these tools doesn't know the existence of other tools. These tools were set up and built to cater a very specific task. And uh, you need more human involvement to work with these tools, to read what these tools present you and act upon. And uh, more tools you have, that means more human involvement is needed. And tools doesn't know the existence of others means there's no integration or, commu or communication between these tools. So more human involvement in the context of oper running operations, more human involvement means you're asking for trouble. And that's very challenging. And it's not scalable. But then again, adopting DevOps is again challenging. It needs lots of pra uh, practice. It takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. And uh, it needs lots of tools. It needs lots of integration. And you might have to write your, your own tools sometimes. And, it, and adopting DevOps itself is a challenging task. And DevOps is primarily uh, run through automation and metrics. Automation factor is obvious. There's no workaround or running around, the, running around the bush. You have to automate everything. Everything has to be automated. And metrics give you the sense of where you are and how you are performing. And that's very important when decision making. And adopting DevOps will increase your agility. And at the same time, it improves quality. We will talk about those factors uh, in uh, one of the future slides, in one of the like, later slides. So the beautiful thing about DevOps is once you have that, you can focus more on innovation rather than keep improving the tools that that, that running uh, in an isolated way. So uh, when you're running routine operations, you need to constantly focus on improving, improving these tools, how these tools perform, and how to maximize the use of these tools. When you, when you expand, when you add more servers, when you add, how can these tools scale with them? But once you have DevOps, that becomes a different story. And you get to ride a different wave. And the bridge between the improvement wave and the innovation wave is DevOps. So pipelining. If you have attended uh, to yesterday's uh, strategy track, uh, my friend Dakshita talked about continuous integration, continuous delivery, and continuous deployment, and pipelining uh, different components uh, of the process. 
So what are the advantages of having these pipelines? Yes, you can enforce best practices. And enforce best practices in the sense, uh, if you want to add certain steps, if you want to enforce policies, you can easily incorporate those with your pipeline. Once you run a build, if you want to run a virus scan or a security scan against your application, you can easily plug that into the pipeline. And that allows rapid delivery. Rapid delivery in the sense, once you have DevOps, you don't have to focus on big band releases. Your releases becomes much shorter and targeted. You will not work on releasing the entire code base. You will focus more on releasing um, components, releasing features. And that, may, that, that means you will be releasing small number of code line, code, small number of code changes at any given time. So what's the benefit of that? Small releases, small and rapid releases means if you run to a failure in your production environment, the chances to recover becomes faster. Because now something, something goes wrong, you don't have to run through the entire code base to see where, where what had gone wrong. You know, the exact num you know the exact portion of code you have pushed, and you can easily debug and fix things. And fast fixes means it, in, it reduces the MTTR, the mean time to recover, uh, at a great deal. So uh, now let's look at how we have built uh, CICD, how we have adopted DevOps at WSO2. So um, we mainly build two pipelines over the recent past. One is we have an image baking system. As most of you know, we are primarily operating uh, in the cloud. And we use AWS to run most of our operations. And we wanted to build a system that guarantees uh, the changes we make at the operating system level and at the package level to be consistent across all the environments we manage. We manage systems at WSO2, and we manage systems at our clients under Manage Cloud. So at any given time, we, will, we have to work on about 50 odd different setups. And each setup might have their own environments. And each setup, have, each setup scales from like two to three nodes from all the way up to like 200, 250 nodes. So when running that, maintaining consistency is critical. So that's where we wanted to have this image baking system. I will talk about that uh, uh, in detail um, in the next few slides. And we have also set up um, a delivery, a change, deli change delivery system that is primarily targeting WSO2 public cloud. So here we are not targeting about releasing WSO2 products. When it comes to public cloud, it alone has some code which manage with just the user management part, and it has these uh, billing components. Those does not come uh, with the standard products that you get from WSO2. So when you are running the cloud environment, you might have to have your own set of codes. codes. And to deliver, those, deliver the changes of those codes, we have built this change delivery system. So when pipelining things, testing is a vital component. So we had to build, we had to build comprehensive test suits for the public cloud as well as for the operating system. And the policy enforcement, again, like I described earlier, policy enforcement, like uh, we wanted to run security, security scans every time we build a new machine image to make sure that we don't have any vulnerable packages or we don't have like a uh, loose configuration in it. So for such things, to enforce such policies, uh, we incorporated some tools and plugged into the pipeline. And I will describe that again when I'm uh, explaining this uh, image baking pipeline. And we have also automated, fully automated, the WAM-based product deployment. And uh, I have another talk uh, in this track. Uh, and uh, there I will talk about uh, how we have done that. But uh, we have done that as well, as part of this DevOps effort. 
So the image baking pipeline. Um, do we have here anyone who's uh, using Packer? Wonderful. So we are using Packer uh, to build our machine images across multiple cloud platforms. And Packer has this, Packer, has, Packer is a YAML, uh, it drives by a YAML code. And uh, you have the Packer definition. And uh, it works with a bunch of other, other scripts that uh, goes into an operating system and performs certain tasks. So we have this uh, Packer definition. And once we have the, uh, once we, uh, an engineer commit the Packer definition or make any changes to the existing code, uh, we have a pack, uh, definition validator to make sure that there are no syntax errors or anything like that. And after that, we build the image. And after we build the image, we spin an instance out of that image, and we run various sorts of tests and scans. For that, we have used Linus and ServerSpec. ServerSpec is the tool we use to uh, go to critical configuration files. For example, go to SSH, SSHD config, or go to, uh, or, or, um, or pull uh, configuration files that has tuning parameters. For example, um, limits file, and make sure that we have the properly tuned parameters and safe configuration are there. So even if a, develop, or a developer or an engineer push a change that has loose configuration, they will get caught uh, by service spec. And it will stop continuing the pipeline and trigger an alert. And Linus is a system that does security scans against the operating system. Linus, both service spec and Linus are open source technologies. And Linus um, runs security scans, it makes sure that there are no vulnerable packages installed in the operating system, and it makes sure that we are up to date with the latest security updates, et cetera, et cetera. And once all those tests passed, we publish the AMI into all AWS regions. So the next time our tools, any of our tools run at our own public cloud or at any of our customer environments that we manage, those tools will automatically pick the latest AMI build and use that. So this is the change delivery pipeline we have. So change delivery pipeline, so when I say changes, it doesn't have to be code changes. It can be the configuration changes, or it can be uh, new artifacts or new services. A change can be anything. So changes comes in two forms to the pipeline. It comes from one the updates, the security updates, and basically the product updates comes through WOM, and all the other sorts of updates comes from a, generates from a workstation of an engineer. And all those changes, so we, the way we have automated this thing is, we have the vanilla, uh, vanilla product distribution, and then we have configuration templates, and we have all the customizations we have done, and we have, um, uh, the templates, customizations, um, and patches or, or tuning parameters or whatever other things uh, that, has to, that needs to go along with the product. And we use Puppet to combine all these components and create the final distribution and copy that to production servers. So once we build this final distribution, uh, when we are building the distribution, we run Puppet, uh, Puppet and Hira validators. We use Puppet Parser and Lint. And then we deploy the, the final pack to staging using Capistrano. Capistrano, I'm sure most of you might have heard of it. Heard of it. Capistrano is a tool that uses um, SSH toolkit, which allows you to execute commands on remote servers in a much more organized manner. So we, you, we use Capistrano to deploy uh, the change into staging, and then we run tests there. And for tests, we use a deployment monitor, which is a tool built by our engineers, uh, what it does is it uh, talks to various admin services of the WSO2 product and simulate use activities. And at the same time, we are running a bunch of Selenium tests as well there. And again, if any of those tests, tests failed, it will trigger an alert and break the pipeline. So once the tests are passed, we copy that distribution pack into production. So the critical component here is we are moving the same distribution pack 
from staging environment to production. That means we have abstracted out all the variables like the credentials, the host names, key stores, everything. We have abstracted out and we create two separate coffee, copies of that and run the same set of templates and the product uh, across environments. So once that is in production, we still have this human approval thing um, that uh, uh, the person who is doing this release has to work together with the, the people who develop it. And uh, once we have the green light, we will trigger the, uh, we will continue the pipeline, and then we run, uh, we simulate the puppet operation in production. We do that in production just to make sure that nothing is broken uh, from the puppet standpoint. And if that throws an error, if puppet finds some errors there, it will again trigger an alert and break the pipeline. Once the puppet simulation runs successfully in production, all the changes will get deployed, and again we run some acceptance tests there to make sure that everything is fine. And the beautiful thing is, while this, all these changes happening in production, uh, we use, uh, since this is public cloud, we use uh, Pingdom and Sage uh, to, to hit some known endpoints continuously to make sure that we do not break anything or we do not ca cause any sort of a downtime while doing all these operations. So now, the best part. So we have invested a lot of time uh, on figuring out this thing. We did not do this because some guy from a faraway island with beautiful um, sunny beaches, came to a technology conference and told you to do so. We built this entire thing because we experienced, we ran operations, we ran operations in a conventional way, and we understood that in a painful way, we understood that we cannot scale anymore, we cannot go jump to the next curve by running operations in the conventional way. We wanted to adopt DevOps. So we went through the pain, we learned our lessons in a hard way, and we built this. And the outcome and the takeaway message from that is, as a customers, we do not expect you to go through the same pain. We do not expect you to follow the same process and understand things the hard way, because we have already done that for you. And we have learned this thing over the past several years. And we have packaged our experience and the tool set we have built and offer this as a managed service to you all. So that means WSO2 run WSO2 solutions for you, and we are doing this. We are doing that in the cloud as well as on-prem. So if you go to this link that is in the blue color, uh, you can find more details about the managed cloud offering. And uh, we, as value-added services to this uh, to this offering, we send uh, weekly update emails, and uh, we send uh, security scan reports to you on uh, periodically. And we give access to dashboards to improve observability. And we give you access to log files in real time through your web browser. And the best part is we keep you close. We have close conversations with you along the way from the very first day. Just because we want to make sure that we have understood you right and we build the right thing for you. So you can, uh, 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 if you have any questions or, or anything related to manage cloud and uh, how we do it and, uh, and uh, the process and the onboarding process and, uh, and the benefits that you can gain from this uh, service, uh, I will be available here uh, today and tomorrow. You can bump in, uh, you can like, talk to me, we can have a conversation and we can understand how you have built systems at your data center, at your organization, and then uh, we can try to learn one or two things from each other. So uh, after that, um, one thing uh, that I have not included in the slides was, uh, again, uh, for this whole change delivery pipeline, we have done 
uh, a full production setup uh, for WSO2 Telco. It's a subsidiary of WSO2 uh, that runs production setups in India and Brazil. And we have implemented this whole pipeline uh, with containers. And uh, they, are running, they are running that entire ecosystem in a very healthy way, uh, completely following this pipeline, this set of tools. And to learn more about running production systems at a scale using containers, uh, my friend Lakmal uh, will come to the stage after me. And uh, he, will enlighten, he will take you to a different uh, dimension of like running containerized systems uh, at scale. So uh, let me introduce Lakmal. Uh, Lakmal is uh, uh, the senior director of cloud architecture, and uh, he has a strong passion uh, towards off-roading uh, in his heavily customized uh, 4x4 Jeep. Um, so uh, if you don't find him in the office, we know where to find him. He could uh, probably uh, stuck his vehicle in a in ditch somewhere in the jungle. Um, so, Lakmal, over to you. Thank you. <laughs>